Hi everyone. Uh, my name. Uh, my name is Anthony Omeke, and uh, I'm a business change analyst uh, based here in the UK, and um, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Okay, I see Rene from Bolivia, Santa Cruz. Thanks, Rene, for joining us. My pleasure. Hi, Hi everybody. Good morning. A cold weather here in Santa Cruz, Bolivia. It's not usual. Somebody in Argentina opened the doors and let the cold weather came to all the way to up. Okay. Not sure. Probably it's colder here in Toronto, but <laughs> well, today we have a, a rainy day, actually. Uh, it's still a little bit cold considering that we're in May, but it's Canada, right? What can we do? All right. I see Olushola. Hi. No. Great to to have to see that you are able to join our session, Timothy. Timothy, uh, it's one of our alumni um, from our programs. Timothy will have a chance to share a little bit uh, of his experience uh, with our programs, uh, and also he will be available as well to answer any questions uh, in case you have for him. Hi, Edward. Hello. Morning. Oh, I'm on camera. Great. That's what you I thought. You are <laughs> in your beautiful house. <laughs> yeah, in my mansion behind. Yeah, Zoom is has been very kind to me. Okay. So, hi everyone. I'm um I'm one of the Latam uh, product and technology um, mentors. So of course I'm very interested to see what is happening here um concerning Africa okay thanks for joining I see Ola Hale from Nigeria CTO of Unplug Finance yeah we do have a lot of um interest from Nigerian companies especially in the fintech sector that are That's looking sorry. to join our programs that was actually one of the reasons why we decided uh to to have an info session just for the african ecosystem because uh we've been getting a lot of traction and a lot of interest from wonderful companies uh that are looking to to expand their their businesses um not just to canada but to to north america okay um, just for the sake of time, uh, I think we are ready to to start. Uh, I'll just start by by sharing my screen. Oh, sorry. Just want to get this out of here okay so welcome everyone i'd um, like to make like a brief introduction uh, of myself and my team here so my name is carl i'm the operations manager at latin startups and i kind of be conducting this info session um i would like this info session uh to be as much interactive as possible uh we'll have uh, at the end some time for questions and answers, but feel free if you have any question related to the topic that I'm talking about, just feel free to put it on the chat and we'll be happy to, to respond. Uh, I also have here uh, Meg Welter. She's the program coordinator for acceleration programs. Uh, I also have Tayo, uh, he's our lead advisor he basically, uh, he's the person in charge of making the bridge between the mentors that we have and the startups. And also we have two companies from uh, our alumni, uh, from Waverlight and Inventory. They will introduce themselves. They will share a little bit about their experience uh, with the program so far. And yeah, we will go from, from there. So in terms of the agenda, just to give you um, an overview how we're going to conduct this, um, because we, we're we going to start by talking a little bit about the Canadian ecosystem. Uh, also, we're going to talk about who we are, right? What we do, 
uh, what we have done so far and accomplished um, in the last few years that we've been working with a lot of startups. Uh, we'll give you an, an overview about our programs, uh, also about some important events that are happening here uh, in the city for the ones who has the possibility to travel to, to Toronto. And also, like I said, we'll hear from uh, two companies uh, that join our program and hopefully we have some time for questions and answers at the end. So um, the reason why I decided to start with Why Canada, it's because so we work exclusively with international uh, tech startups and newcomers. And something that we always, um, when we start conversations uh, with companies and, and we got like four or five inquiries per day, uh, and that's the reason why we do these info sessions so we can answer to as many questions as possible to a lot of people. It's that people doesn't have an idea about Canada. Um, a lot of people look into the United States and it makes sense. It's a larger market. Uh, and a lot of the times the companies that apply to our programs, they're actually targeting the the American market, but Canada has a lot to offer in terms of the tech uh, ecosystem. It's the second largest tech corridor in the world after Silicon Valley, uh, up from here, Toronto, where we are located, up to uh, Kitchener, Waterloo. There's a, 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 a several innovation hubs that can help tech startups to grow and scale their business, um, not just into North America, but from here to all of the world. Uh, like uh, we have two of the world top five university business incubators uh, this year, um, named by UB Global, uh, University of Toronto, McGill in, in Montreal. We have two of the top world also uh, business accelerators. Uh, and again, there's a, as you can see, there's a lot of reasons um, to be here in Canada. Something that it's not here. And uh, I like to say because um, a lot of the startups are looking for funding. So a lot of the companies came to us, I want to expand, but I'm also looking for funding. Something that we recommend all is to do uh, and it's something that I think it's one of the big advantage uh, of incorporating Canada. It's the government grants that are available here. And a lot of people doesn't know that. So basically we always recommend probably before starting go to investors, uh, make use, take benefit of the Canadian grants because there's grants for everything. And again, um, grants, uh, we like to say that it's free money. Of course, you have to show results. You have to send reporting and you have to uh, pretty much know where you want to allocate the funds. But it's a tremendous help. And once companies are settled down here, they actually see the value on that. So moving uh, forward and... Um, I'm looking here, I tried to open my chat as well. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, no. Uh, I opened the chat and now I can't close it. Great. Uh, you wanna leave? I'll just stop sharing for a moment, perhaps. Yeah, Carla, I'll keep an eye on the chat so you don't yes. have to worry about it. Okay. So here we go. I was able to do it. So um, speaking about Latin startups, so who we are. So we are a community of startups. Uh, like I said, uh, all of our team, uh, it's all of us are newcomers. So we basically specialize in helping international uh, startups in the tech industry and also newcomers that are looking to scale their businesses uh, in North America. Uh, hey, where Carla, you're, you're not sharing right now. No? No. Am I sharing now? No. 
Okay. Am I sharing? Yes, now you are. Okay, yes, yes. sorry about that. Um, so like I was telling, we work exclusively international startups and newcomers that are looking to scale their businesses here in Canada. Um, we are also one of the designated sponsors for the Canada Startup Visa Program. That is actually uh, probably the most popular program that we have that I will walk you through a little bit more in detail right, um, right after that. So we incorporated as a non-for-profit in 2016. Uh, we started our first cohort of companies in 2017. Uh, we've been uh, having the support of the City of Toronto, of the federal government of Canada. Uh, and with that support, uh, we are being able to put a lot of resources like advisors, a lot of industry experts, and a lot of people able to kind of help you scale your business. Like Edward, for example, he introduced himself. Uh, he's a product mentor, and uh, he's been helping from the technology uh, point of view a lot of companies to, to scale. Um, but going here into a little bit more detail of who we are, so basically, we've been through these years, we've been helping more than 200 startups. We have more than 60 companies in acceleration phase. Uh, and you might wonder, like 200 startups might be a low number when you probably compare with other uh, incubators. The reason for that is because we don't work with companies in the ideation form. So for us to be ex willing to be accepted to our programs, you have to have at least an MVP. You have to have a business that is ready uh, to go to the market. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to know everything about the North American market. No, we're here to help you. But you have to have a business. And if the business or the solution has to be adapted to the Canadian market, we're also here to help you. But that's the reason uh, why we don't, you are expecting hundreds of companies. That's because of that. Um, we also, I mean, like I said, due to the nature uh, of our business and the fact that we only work with international companies, we are, I, I don't know, but diversity, it's uh, in our DNA, like we've been working with more than 30 countries, more than 50 languages spoken, so diversity, uh, it's something that uh, we breathe every day. Uh, and speaking of that, I probably should say that at the beginning, because uh, at the beginning, we start working with companies more from Latin America and organically we grow. And basically nowadays we help companies from all over the world, especially from emerging markets. Uh, we decided to rebrand this year. So you might associate, okay, Latin startups with Latin America. Uh, this year, you will hear a new name, a new brand, a new logo, because we want to be more inclusive to the companies that we've been helping. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, big news for us this year. Uh, we also are proud to have 30% um, of co-founders as women. We know how hard it is, especially in the tech sector, to have women taking the lead. We've seen a lot of... Um, traction and a lot of uh, improvement on that side. So yeah, we, we're happy, very happy to know that we work with a lot of uh, women with a lot of potential uh, to run companies uh, in the tech uh, system. Uh, we have a pool of more than 40 advisors from different ranges, from sales to marketing, finance, talent acquisition, product, customer discovery, you name it, right? Uh, and again, we a lot of the some a lot of the benefits that the companies see. It's the work the advisors do with them to basically help them to connect with the right people in the market and to get them customers or partners, depending on the business. And finally, uh, we are very proud to say that we have two unicorns in our portfolio: um, Econa and Cloudwalk. Uh, they were both. Uh, companies that uh, were part of the startup visa program and uh, they even without during the program 
uh, they were able to re reach the unicorn level, which means more than $1 billion valuation. So um, going here to our programs. So we have different programs. And again, uh, this could be very overwhelming information. So I'm going to touch a little bit on them on a very uh, high level. But again, if you have any questions during the time, feel free to interrupt me. So we do have the startup visa path. Like I said, it's the most uh, popular program that we have and typically the one that we have more questions. Uh, we have the corporate program. We have a program that is for newcomers. So basically um, for permanent residents or citizens that are already here established in Canada, build up a scale up program. It's a brand new program. It's an online program and though for companies that are still in the ideation form, and we have specialized boot camps. So going here to the startup visa path that we have. So like I said, uh, this is basically the requirements that we have. Uh, it's for tech companies um, usually, uh, and typically to give you an idea, the companies that we have, are already companies that are doing well in their home country. We have companies that might be generating up two to $10 million in their home country, and they're looking to the next step. They are looking to scale into uh, North America and they reach out to us. Um, they have to have, uh, for the startup visa path, they have to have some intellectual property to claim. It doesn't mean that they have to have it implemented, but through the path, because it's one of the requirements from the Canadian government, they need to have a strategy and a process in place. Um, they have to be financial stable, the company. So basically uh, the companies uh, that are looking to because these companies are looking to reallocate over here right and um the startup visa uh, program uh, what they do they allow up to five co-founders to reallocate to canada it doesn't mean that the five co-founders have to reallocate uh, most of the cases that we have uh, we only have one or two. It doesn't mean that's a decision from the company, but the, what the program entitles, it's up to five co-founders. And uh, again, they, the company needs to have some financial stability uh, to show that they have enough funds uh, to operate in Canada, uh, at least for the first year, assuming that no revenue will come under the Canadian uh, corporation. And of course, the startup visa path, like I was saying, uh, it's for co-founders that are willing to, to reallocate to Canada. Um, it's a total of nine months, the program, uh, and it's divided by phases. So we have one, the phase one, what we call the market research, market validation, where we basically work on a very customized way with you to see, to assess uh, your product to market fit. We have market research analysts that will work close with you to see um, how your product, how your solution fits within the Canadian or the North American market. Then we have uh, two more months, what we call the phase two, the market entry, uh, where we're basically going to test a lot of the assumptions you have about the Canadian market. Uh, and through this program, you have access to work with advisors from the different fields that I already mentioned that can help you define even more, have a more clarity about the Canadian market. And then I know that a lot of people, one of the questions that we have, uh, it's when do we wish the letter of support? So the letter of support each issue after the phase two, after three months of getting to the program. After that, uh, the companies will basically have to pitch to our board of directors. And if they approved, we issue the letter of support. So they so you can start working on your work permit and, pre and permanent residency. 
after that, we'll have six more months, what we call the acceleration phase, where we'll be even more hands-on and prepare your business for the Canadian market. Um, we have uh, our, so what we are doing, um, and I'll, I'll send you after the, the session we'll, together with the recorded session, uh, we're going to have these uh, live sessions. They are free of charge. So I'll send you the link for whoever wants to get the more deep insights about these topics. We are going to run these sessions between May 15 and May 17, where you can have a deeper knowledge about uh, what I was just high describing very high level. I'll send you the link Feel free to join. Uh, I think if you're considering um, reallocating to Canada or even not reallocated to Canada, but just to expand your business here. I believe these sessions will give you a lot of clarity. Um, for whoever it's interested in joining the, the phase one, uh, we have the phase one will start on June 5th and we have a deadline to apply until May 21st. Uh, I think Samari, if you want, you can, um, you can put the link uh, for for the application to the session, to the to the phase one. Sorry. Um, then we have uh, another program, uh, and I know we have. I've seen some chats. I'm not reading, but uh, Meg, if you have a look into the chat, yep. feel free. Yeah, to I'm answering. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, so moving forward to the corporate program. So basically, this program. Uh, it's very similar to our phase three of the startup visa path. Basically, it's the acceleration program. It has the same structure. The difference is that the co-founders are no, not looking to immigrate into Canada. Basically, they are looking to open a second headquarter. They are looking to expand, but they are not looking to move into here. So they don't have to go through the letter of support through that paperwork. So basically, this is a, a acceleration program where we work with, with the companies, even in a more customized way. We have to assess what their needs are, where they are right now, and then we put a plan together with them to achieve whatever their goals are. Get, get customers, get partners, get funding. Uh, so basically, that's what we work. It has a minimum duration of six, six months, but if companies they can continue to work with us so and from our experience the companies that we've been having so far in the corporate program they always want to continue with us uh, for longer um then we have the program and uh i'm not going to get into more detail because I don't know, I'm assuming that most of you guys are joining us outside Canada. So this program, the NIA program, it's for um, either permanent residents or Canadian citizens that are already here in Canada. And again, they have a tech business, a tech solution. They need help with accelerate their growth. And again, it's a six month program and it's also supported by the government and provided a lot of good resources. Um, so just to summarize in terms of the benefits of joining our programs, and this is either to the startup visa path, to the corporate or to the newcomer. So this is just something, some of the benefits that you will get with us. You will get IP strategy advice, like I was telling, particularly for the startup visa path. It's super important that you have a clear idea what's going to happen to your IP. And when we're talking about IP, um, we're talking about mostly about copyrights, trade secrets, or patents. You don't have to have a patent. We know that a patent takes years, and we know that most of you, in order to get a patent, will get some, you will need some funding, but at least uh, copyrights or trade secrets. A lot of the companies come to us with trademarks. For the Canadian government's trademarks, it's not strong enough. So that's something that uh, we always like to emphasize. And of course, uh, we always prepare, we have sessions with different advisors to help you with your sales pitch, 
to start getting new customers investment pitch. We also do demo days uh, twice a year where we prepare you guys to pitch in front of investors. Um, we also, like I was saying, we have a lot of more than 40 um, coaches. And between those coaches, besides the business coaches, the industry experts, we do provide C fractionals. And we see that this is something that we implemented last year. And we see the difference of a company that it's been working with a C fractional. By C fractional, I mean, uh, it could be a CMO, a CTO, a CMO. We know how expensive these resources are. So uh, in a part-time uh, regime, we can make you work uh, with these kind of resources, which are very valuable. And of course, uh, we have resource, we have support uh, with the marketing, talent acquisition. We always invite it to our events. We do a lot of events to our community. Uh, co-working space, it's also included. And I also refer to Acceleration Plus, which is another six months program that you can join for free to kind of continue the work that you've been doing with us. Um, in terms of uh, build up a scale up, uh, this is very brand new. Uh, it's an online program and this time, it's the first time we're doing this. It's for companies that are in the ideation from commercialization. So basically, uh, we work on a very individual basis and we provide them the resources they have to start planning and start building uh, their business. It doesn't matter if it's in Canada. Uh, you can have an idea, but it doesn't matter if your customer would be located in Canada or the United States. This is actually applicable for everyone that wants to start their business. Um, we are currently um, doing a cohort that started in March. The next cohort, again, somewhere you can put the links um, to apply to, to the programs. Then we have uh, boot camps. Um, boot camps that we, so we do, and we are all talk you, we have a boot camp for October. So the reason we do boot camps, it's basically it's for companies that are in that stage that I want to know more about Canada. I want to explore that possibility. I'm not too sure. Uh, so just it's just, okay, let me get a flavor of what the Canadian ecosystem can offer me. So what we do, it's like one week uh, that basically for the people that has the chance to travel here in Canada, where we kind of not only give you some uh, lectures and put you in contact with people, but we actually do a tour and we show you the different innovation centers, not just in Toronto, saying we have a large tech corridor so you kind of give you a tour so you can have an idea of the potential that uh, the market can offer to you um going back here to events so if you have the chance to travel to toronto um we're going to do our 10 edition of our conference uh the conference will take place in june 26th it's the first day of collision uh, for who knows collision. It's the, the biggest tech um, event happening in North America. It's the same organizers of the web summit. Right now there's the web summit uh, running in Rio de Janeiro. We have our team with a booth there and there's even the, the web summit that they do every year in Lisbon, Portugal. So we do the conference on the first day of collision. So Again, uh, we can send some more, you can send the link to apply and to register uh, for our conference. Uh, this year, it's all about Web3. We're going to have like, like six speakers, kind of TED style, uh, TED talk style, talking about Web3 and the trends in the market. We have a self-speech competition. We have um, a lot of our stakeholders from our community will be joining from startups, from Officer, uh, officers from the government, uh, other accelerators, all of our community will be here. If you're planning to come to Cablesian, that's a great opportunity for you to expand even more your networking. Uh, and again, 
talking about collision. That's the biggest if you have the chance to, to come. Actually, the date it's not updated. I think this probably was the date from last year. So it starts on the 26th, actually, this year. Then we have Elevate Toronto. I guess it's the second largest stack event happening here. It takes in September. And we have in October the Global Toronto Forum. And that's where we're having a boot camp at the same time. So basically, uh, we're doing a boot camp in this week. The boot camp will give you access to the event. The Global Toronto Forum basically uh, talks about national and global issues. And you will have a chance to connect with heads of states, uh, with central bank governments, uh, with kind of decision makers. And it's a great opportunity to network, to know what's going on around the world, to schedule meetings with potential customers and partners. So the boot camp that we'll do will be through this week. Uh, it will give you access to, to this um, and also will include a tour to Hamilton. Uh, and to Niagara, um, which we have where people will get to know uh, in more depth the different hub innovation centers. Uh, for for example, for who's interested in the healthcare um, sector, Helmington, it's great with the innovation centers, with McMaster University. For who's interested, for example, in the agri-tech sector, not just Niagara, it's perfect. And it's just one step away from the United States again. So uh, during this week, uh, we will do a good overview uh, of the of the tech corridor that we have from here, from Toronto uh, until Kitchener-Waterloo. And uh, that's it. Uh, I wanted to keep it short because I wanted to give uh, space for questions as well. Um, you have our, this is our email. Feel free to reach out, Samar. Uh, you can also, you can also follow on social media. We are very active on social media, LinkedIn, um, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube videos. You can, you can watch um, videos testimonials from our companies that can give you more insights. You can also website, we have the news page where you can see, see those short clips. But uh, because at the end, I think the best way uh, to describe who we are is, is through testimonials, right? And that's why I invited Timothy from Inventory and I invited Dan and Gerard, and I'll probably I'll just stop sharing now uh, that I invited two of our companies to kind of talk a little bit and share very briefly their experience that they have been so far. Both of them uh, enrolled in the startup visa path. So I don't know if who wants to start. Timothy, do you want to start? Yes, um, I'll go first. Um, um, good morning, everyone um, from uh, all over the world. My name is um, Timothy Ojo. I'm the CEO of um, Valino Systems in Nigeria. Uh, Valino Systems uh, is a company with over a decade of um, experience in Nigeria. But at the point of incorporation in Nigeria, I and my co-founders has always envisioned Valino to be a global brand. So after operating for a decade, you know, I called my co-founders for a meeting. And um, the question at that meeting was, what next? What do we do next? You know, And um, we all agreed that it was time to take that next step. So what we did was to start researching how you know, to take that next step. And one of the opportunities that comes to us was um, the startup um, visas. So for the startup visas, uh, we had a couple of countries in mind. You know, So we looked at the United Kingdom, we look at uh, countries in Europe, we look at the US. But at the end of the day, after considering everything, we settled for Canada. You know, and one of the reasons why we settled for Canada was because the government of Canada's policy about startup, you know, aligns with what we think it should be. You know, uh, Canada is a place where we felt we are needed rather than a place where we want to go. You know, we also look at the accident of the Canadian government and also found out that they've always been in support of immigrants and also startup um, businesses. So we decided to go for the Canadian startup program. And um, we also did some search on um, designated entities, you know, in Canada. Now, designated entities are usually entities like uh, 
a venture capitalist, an angel investor, or a business incubator. After considering that also, we started to go for a business incubator because we're coming into a new country. We know the culture will be different, both uh, the people culture and the corporate culture will be different in Canada. So we felt we need to learn a bit about the business culture. So instead of going straight for a venture capitalist or uh, an angel investor, we decided to go for you know uh, an incubator program. So after going through the incubator programs we have, we shortlisted three of them and we applied to three of them. Um, the three of them got back to us, you know, and we had an offer for three of them. But when we went through LATAM's offer, we, we decided that LATAM was the best um, was the best fit for us, you know. So we went with um, LATAM. The LATAM program was divided into three phases: phase one, phase two, and phase three. We applied in um, we applied around May in 2021. By July 2021, the program started. Phase we went through phase one, phase two, and um, by December, you know. Uh, by December, we know we're going to get our letter of uh, support after going through the whole program. And uh, by January, we got our letter of support. We applied for uh, our permanent residency and work permit at the same time. And um, same 2022, you know, our work permit came out. Um, we moved to we moved to Canada in January this year. You know, moved to Canada this year and our permanent resident. But along the way, you know, there are a lot of uh, lessons we've learned, you know, there are a lot of things we're grateful for uh, because there are times whereby we have to learn and also unlearn what we know. You know, coming from Nigeria, the culture in Nigeria and the culture in Canada are quite different. And there's no way we'll have come this far or do what we did without um, LATAM. LATAM was able to, you know, provide us with resources in every area, you know, company incorporation, mentors, advisors, coaches in different areas. Um, at a point, you know, I was telling one of my co-founders jokingly that it's like LATAM as, um, as a, a mentor and investor for every business in the world, you know, be it engineering, be it software, be it um, health, you know, because uh, among the people in my cohort, we have people who are in the health sector, you know, where like pocket clinic, for example, they're in the health sector, we're in the software sector. We have some people in the manufacturing sector and LATAM was able to bring all all, all of us under one umbrella and able to, you know, to coach us. Um, I would say um, LATAM, you know, and the startup visa is one of the biggest things that's happened to us in the last five years uh, because um, it's a big decision, you know, to leave a business you've been running for over 10 years, you know, in Nigeria and move to another country, you know. And to be able to take that decision, you know, it was because we had LATAM, you know. Along the way, at the beginning, we had a little bit of doubt, but that was put to rest quickly, you know. After we've met a lot of people, we spoke to Mayam a couple of times. I was in Canada at some point. I met uh, I met Mayam. We had some discussion. We look at, um, you know, people that had come before, who in the court earlier than us, they're all doing well. And um, if anything, for example, I know that um, if you are in Nigeria currently or in any other country in the world, and you are looking at uh, moving into another country to start your business, I can definitely tell you that Canada is a good place to do it. And I can also tell you that LATAM Startup is the best um, incubator, business incubator to do it with. Thank you. Thank you so much, Timothy. It was a very kind of you, uh, what you, you mentioned about this. Um, I don't know. I think Dan, we have Dan and Gerard, they're coming out. They might have um, connection problems, but I can go ahead. I know there's some questions. And I'll get to you all. Carla, Dan is still here. Dan is here? Yeah, but I don't know if we want to take the question first anyway. I can take the question. So Benjamin is asking if there's a cost fee to be paid to join the Startup Path program. Yes. Um. So it's a flat fee. So again, we don't take equity uh, over the companies. Uh, we charge flat fees and the fee that we charge it's 2500 US dollars per month mm -hmm. so basically we will charge to uh, for phase 1 um 2500 dollars then phase 2 because it's 2 months will be 5000 US dollars and the remaining for the 6 months will be the 2500 i think it's 15000 uh, dollars that's uh, you don't have to pay everything in advance the entire program you pay by phase phase one you pay then you move forward to phase two you pay and then if you move forward to phase three you will pay hope that uh that happens uh i have another question in the 
uh, Oliver, he raised the hand. Do you still have a question, Oliver? Yes, I was going to type it. I thought uh, you prefer me to type the question, but I can just ask it. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. we can hear you, Oliver. I couldn't uh, understand. Okay. All right. The question is for Timothy and then for Carla. Thank you so much, Carla. Thank you for Timothy. And thank you, Meg, for answering some of my initial questions. So T Timothy mentioned that, you know, after phase one, if I heard him correctly, after phase one, um, then I applied for a uh, work permit and then uh, PR around the rest. For a founder that have an active business, I'm just curious. I raised my curiosity to say, phase one, throughout that phase one incubation period, what happens to your business? Where you'll be located um, where? The question is, where will you be located? Can you be located in your home country and still run your business while you are doing that phase one? Or will you be uh, immigrating and you know relocating to do that? And then what happens to your business? Because that seems to be like a lot of time to not attend to your business, uh, okay. especially if you have some traction already. Yeah. Okay, so I'll answer the question. Um, what I actually said was that um, we went through phase one, phase two, and at the end of phase two, you know, that was when we got the letter of support. So that was, it's not at the end of phase one. You get the, the letter of support at the end of phase two, going into phase three. So that answers your first question. Then um, while we're attending the lectures, we're located in Nigeria. We have just about um, an average of maybe two lectures per week. Each one of them takes about an hour. So it's not a lot of time to dedicate, you know. And one other thing is that sometimes most of this lecture happens because of the time difference. It happens in the afternoon, evening. There are even some that we attend to when we get home, like lectures that were around nine o'clock, you know, eight o'clock. We just planned ourselves for it and were able to attend it. So all these lectures were attended to while we were in Nigeria. So I came to Canada um, during the process just because um, I wanted to see the country, you know, where I'm moving the business to. So that, that's optional, but it's a good thing, you know, so that you can see where you are coming to. So I came to Canada, spent two weeks just to see, you know, what the culture is like in Canada before we make that bigger, that bigger leap. And coming to Canada, looking around, I was even more con convinced than I was at the beginning. A lot of time to dedicate. You know, um, if you have like two, three co-founders or four co-founders, for example, sometimes we have a situation whereby we all can't attend the meeting. So what we do is uh, we can designate two of the co-founders or three of the co-founders to attend the meeting. And when we can, we all also attend the meeting. It's very flexible and it's not something that will put a toll on your business. Thank you. Thank you. That answers me. Thank you. Thanks, Oliver. I I had uh, someone ask me uh, to repeat Bukola. Okay, Meg already uh, responded. Uh, it's in the chat for whoever didn't get a chance to uh, to hear uh, about the payment fee. Um, I would like to ask Dan, since sorry I didn't see you before, uh, if you want to bring your experience. Who knows? More questions come after. Uh, your your testimonial. So hi guys, um, good afternoon here from Nigeria. I don't know if I'm audible enough. Yes, you are. Fantastic. So my name is Dan, co-founder uh, here at Red Villa. Red Villa is a payment service provider here in Nigeria. So we help individuals and businesses in Nigeria send out and receive payments. And just like Timothy rightly said, we had run the business in Nigeria for over four or five years. And we were to expand as well. And we had a conversation with his friend and he said, he introduced us to the start of the program. And we went, on, went online and did our own research and we found Latam. And we applied, we got a call, and we decided to start the program. So a part of the things we did or we experienced in the course of the program was, was that our product wasn't designed for the Canadian market. And um, with the series of sessions we had with the mentors in Latam, we had to redesign a new product. And today we have a new product called Waverlight. Waverlight is a international remittance platform that allows newcomers in Canada or immigrants in Canada to send money from Canada 
back to their home country and even from their home country back to Canada. Um, how do things we did differently? We know that there are a lot of tons of payment services out there that we could hear. Um, part of the task for us is that we designed a system that could remit money between Nigeria, Canada, and 40 other countries instantly. So we designed these products with the help of the mentors and the coaches. Uh, we coach we got from the Latin startup community. And uh, one thing that really that stands out with Latin is the involvement, right? They want to see you grow. Uh, they are basically help for every aspect of your business. You talk about marketing, there's somebody to talk to you about marketing. And part of the things we learned today, I mean, we ran businesses for a lot of four years. And we got into the program and it felt like we're just doing business for the first time, right? Yeah. I, I mean, that's when it's only fair. And we learned marketing in, from a whole new perspective. We know that a lot of companies in Nigeria just do big company money, build products, and then they just launch into the market. I mean, it's different for Canada, right? You need to understand the buyer persona. There's a lot of research you need to do to understand that people actually need what you're buying and sell. So you get the you get the audience and then you build your product for them. I mean, we get in Nigeria people build products and start looking for customers, right? So we understand that part of the business, and that has helped us to shape our products. Wave Alight was designed and launched September last year. You know, with the help of the Latin startup community, and as I speak to you today, uh, we have over twenty five thousand users on our platform, and we are remitting. A hundred, over a hundred thousand dollars in a monthly basis from Canada back to Nigeria. Today we have remittance services not just to Nigeria but also being able to send money from Canada to Kenya, to South Africa, to China, uh, the UK, and many other countries as well. And it's been very exciting for us. Um, with the Latam program, we've been able to expand and call ourselves a global company. So it's not just the the Nigerian company that we used to be. We used to be now. We now have support uh, from the Latin Star community. Basically, there's anything you need, you can reach out to Miriam, the CEO, which is so accessible. Uh, there are times where we have to come back to her for some support, and she just helps us, right? If there's any help you need to get the document, legal advice, you need help with registering your business, you need help with your IP, intellectual property, you need help, basically anything you need help with is killing your business and establishing properly in Canada. They do it for you. And uh, at the end of our program, they recommended us from that program is the Athletic Top Plus program, which we're currently in now. And it's been so exciting, you know. So uh, I'm very grateful with the opportunity we received from them for me. Is it's a blessing, right? So I mean that's all I can say uh, about the program. So I advise if you're in Nigeria and start up here and you want to scale your business, Canada is the, the country to go to. Uh the government is so supportive. It's so supportive. If you get your PR, you still get to keep your Nigerian uh um identity you do the, 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 the country is so accepted it really accepts you. Uh, and we are very family oriented. You can bring your family along. You know, you just you just come. Basically, eighty percent of the workforce in in Canada are all poor by immigrants. So it's a country that is used on immigration. So it's the best place for you to be. And that's why we launched our payment service there because we know that a lot of people are moving to Canada and they need to send money back home. So thank you for your time. And I hope you you just don't attend this meeting, but you know, take the right step in getting to the program. Thanks. Okay, thank you so much, Dan. Yeah, and I, I know that we talk about the word community, and uh, that is something that it's very, very important, either if you're online, if you're here in person, we always support you, even after the nine months, you're entitled uh, to one year of monitoring the still askers uh, will there to support you uh like i said we do a lot of events this week like tomorrow we do something every month that we call lessons learned where we bring 
business owners and actually Timothy is going to be one of the speakers for tomorrow where they share we have business owners uh, that share their experience of growing a business in Canada uh, it's a great learning uh, and then after that there's also space to network like food drinks of course you guys are not here but this is just to give you an insight of things that 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 we do uh, a lot and like I said um all of our team we been through different stages we are newcomers we know the challenge we know how it is sometimes and we feel that the culture adaptation sometimes is the first barrier once you get used on how to do business here in North America, you'll see that things will flow much easier. And again, uh, that's that's something that we probably we don't you don't see that in the website or you don't see that that's part of the structure of the program, but that's implicit. That's very important. It's something that we work with you guys on a day to day uh, basis. Um, we still have some questions. Okay. How do I apply for the startup visa path program? Uh, Samara, I don't, can you put on the chat the, the link for the application? Like I said, we are doing applications until May 21st. Uh, the cohort will start May, June. What we do, our process is once we get your application online, it's a simple application where you have to fill out a few questions. We'll schedule a quick 15 minute interview with you just to get to know a little bit more in depth your business, but also for you if you have any questions for us. And then if we got into an agreement, we start working with you guys. Um, I also recommend you guys, if you have the time uh between my 15 and 17 to watch those uh live sessions uh that will also give you a lot of insights uh if you aren't sure uh should i apply should i not apply i think those sessions are a great start for you guys no commitment at all again i'll send the, the link after um phase one how many months phase two okay yeah meg already described phase one one month uh phase two two months after that um we issued a letter of support and then phase three six six months and then through another year uh, if you want we're here to 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 support you guys and uh, about the first question um if you have to be a lot of the companies this is a question that we have a lot of times so oh, i need to be here in order to grow my business here um that's something that some of the business might be if you have a physical location, we kind of understand. But since a lot of a business, especially in the tech industry, um, you can grow and you can work uh, your business while you are waiting for your work permit or for example, for your work permit. That's something that we all, and again, that's some mindset that we see. You don't have to wait to be here to start working hard in your business, right? Nowadays, you have access. You can schedule online meetings. You can prepare everything, right? Uh, you can do a lot of things online. You don't really have to be physically here. So because, and the reason why I'm telling you, because there's a lot of uncertainty and we have a lot of questions. So how long it will take me to get my work permit or my permanent residence? I mean, unfortunately, we don't have that crystal ball. We don't. We are not government. Uh, we know that the pandemic, unfortunately, um, slowed down a lot of things with the IRCC. But this year, we are seeing that they're actually moving faster. Um, to give you an idea, so far we have seven um, uh, co-founders that got their permanent residency and this is was between 2020 and 2021 so far uh, uh we have no rejections at all and we are very proud to say that if we have knock on wood right i'm just knocking on wood right now but we have no rejections and uh, we've seen a lot of this year i don't know meg how many work permits we've seen just in the first three months of the year seven six uh, something we, like that. yeah i six. mean it's gonna be something like that maybe more I, and that's uh in terms of just total number of, of work permits um yeah 
Yeah, we're seeing a lot more. Uh, we, we've seen more approvals this year by now than we did in all of 2022. So, yeah. um, I mean, there's there's a strike now, so they might slow down a little bit again. But hopefully once that's over, um, they'll pick back up where, you know, where they left yeah. off. Yeah. But again, there's always uncertainty. That's why we always tell you, don't wait till you're, I mean, the, the fastest uh pr that we got was three months but that i think it was the fastest ever the longest it was before we, the pandemic too it was so that's yes a big difference <laughs> the longest we have was three years so you see right so again don't just if you have the idea just go forward do it and continue working until uh, your business until you have because you can do a lot of things uh remotely for sure um just checking any other questions yeah i hope my answer is about the i'm sorry there was some confusion about the fees but it is oh. yeah it, it is a it is 2500 per month across the board it's just that the phases are different lengths so that's why they have different fees so phase 1 is 1 month phase 2 <clears throat> is 2 months and phase 3 is 6 months so yes. Yes. If if any if you have any other questions, I'm still happy to to answer. But um, yeah, uh, Afalabi, I hope I pronounced that right. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you very much for all the information. Uh, my name is Afalabi, uh, founder of Better Life. I have a couple of my my team here also in the in the session, but I just have this. Uh, uh, I wanted to clarify this. Uh, you said you issue letter of support at the end of the second phase. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes. so and the the first phase is a uh, two five. Uh, the second phase is a uh, five thousand, mm -hmm. and the third phase is a uh, fifteen thousand. Yes, correct. So at the end of the second phase, you issue a letter of support, and uh, uh, I mean founders or companies can begin to. You know, apply for either work permit mm -hmm. or PR. Okay, so what now happens after the second phase? You continue. So we get into the phase three or the acceleration phase where oh, you we should maybe mention the the board of directors. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, it's not guaranteed that you get the letter of support. You will have to pitch. Uh, to our board of directors. So basically, that's the work we've been, we will do th during the three months. We will prepare you. We'll make sure that your business, it's a good case for the Canadian government. And to test that out, if I can put in these words, at the end of phase two, you will pitch to Latin Startups Board of Directors that it's going to evaluate, indeed, this is a good business. This is a scalable business um, uh, to bring to Canada. So if they approve, after they approve, and again, this is all happens at the end of phase two, we'll issue the letter of support. So it, that it, it's conditional to the approval of the board of directors. But again, that's our uh, the work that we'll be doing together in three months and make sure that um, you get the best preparation for that. Then after the six months, is just continue your work. We will you get the chance to work with the industry experts. You get the chance to work with a C fractional uh, that will also help you with your strategy. I mean, it's a continuation. You basically you're not like I was saying. You're not going to wait. Okay, I I put the paperwork for my work permit. Now I'm going to wait. No, you will continue working and developing your business, and that's the work we've been doing through the six months. You'll be working either through sales, uh, if you like uh, marketing, uh, if you need support with financial projections with your business plan. We'll be there to continue the work and actually make things happen. We'll try to put you, if you're ready, put you in contact with potential customers, with potential partners. If you, if investment funding, it's something that you are looking for, we can start preparing you to pitch to investors and including our demo days that we do twice a year. So there's a lot of work to do. It's not an easy process. That's why it's it's nine months, right? So that's that's a lot of things to do for sure after phase two. Okay. Um, 
I, I still have a follow-up question, please. Yes. Uh, so has there been any time that uh, uh, a company is not issue a letter of support? If they don't pass the board of directors, uh, we won't issue the letter of support. What happened? You can reapply and you can pitch in the next, uh, you have like six months, right? So the reason there will be a, re in case you don't pass, there will be a reason. You'll get feedback. So probably that's something that you have to work more. So you can work and whenever you're ready, you can pitch again. It's, I'm not saying if you don't pass the first time, it's not the end. You can still pitch uh, again. And I think you have, uh, I'm not sure, Meg, two cohorts to, to do that? Uh, yeah, just about. So you could probably skip maybe one, but um, you know, then after the, the next one is, is when we would pretty much need to, you know, have the next try. Um, you know, we, we just, we just can't put it off forever because it's, there's a lot of like uncertainty around, you know, yes. things have changed and, and that sort of thing. Yes. But, but you can still reapply and pitch again, for sure. Okay. So, um, let me just add something uh, to what Apollobia has, uh, um, I'd like to mention that, um, it's rare for you not to pass if you follow the structure of the LATAM team. Uh, because during first, before you are accepted into LATAM, they will have checked your business to make sure that it's a good fit. That's number one. During the first phase and second phase, all those things will also be checked. You know, you'll be given instructions. You know, you'll be coached. So it's rare. It could happen, but it's rare for you not to pass. It's not something that it's common. You know, if you really work hard at it, follow all the instruction, then um, I will say that um, it's probably ninety-five percent guaranteed that you will pass through. So it's not common. You know. If you follow yeah. all the instruction, you work on your IP strategy, you know, list of things to do. If you do all those things, tick all the boxes, then there will, there will actually be no reason for you not to pass. Yes, no, for sure. You say, yeah, I would say 90%. I think it's the, like you said, it's the, the percentage that we see companies moving for phase two to phase three. Again, it doesn't mean that they will move later on. Uh, I see a quick question. At what phase? Oh, and I'm so sorry. Um, do you have any other questions, Alfalabi? Okay, uh, I think no more questions for now. Okay, and again, you have our email. Feel free to to send me to send us any questions you have. Um, okay. There's a question about what phase is incorporation done. That's a great question. It's also um, at I already the end answered of phase it, Carla. It's two. okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, someone is asking about the corporate program. Yeah, we can put those links. Like I said, corporate program very similar to phase three. It's a more customized approach. We'll basically work more specifically in what you need. Uh, what are you looking for in terms of growing your business here in North America? Um, require benefits. Okay. Okay. Someone is giving here uh, information about the, uh, someone is already giving information <laughs> about how to benefit from some of the things in Canada. Um, how long does incorporation take? Very simple process here uh, in Canada. Uh, we, so we, uh, you can go, so we have incorporation lawyers as partners. You can work with them or you can work with any other uh, lawyer. You're not obligated. Uh, it's just like the same for immigration process. We have immigration lawyers. Uh, that are partnering with us. Again, you can work with them or you can select whoever the firm. Uh, but in corporation, it's, it's days. I mean, it's, it's very few days. Yeah. few days. It's very simple process. Uh, opening a bank account, that's something that actually might be a little bit more tricky in the sense is the problem is that we are not seeing a consistent approach from the banks. 
we've had the couple of and we can actually if you get into that stage we can get in contact with the we have a few startups that were actually able to open uh, a business account remotely but the majority will ask you to be here in person yeah right yeah the, the experience that we've had is um it, rbc seems to be the most permissive in terms of um the um, opening remote accounts, but they seem to take it on a case by case basis. So um, it's, yeah, I wish that we had a, a more consistent way of, of making it happen. I know some startups will, um, you know, take on kind of like a, an advice, like a put someone like on a board of directors that is in Canada that can do it on their behalf. That's something that we've seen um, you know, you want to be careful. You don't want to pick just anybody, but um, it is one option. But um, we have seen some startups do it outside of, you know, before they've got any status, just, you know, right, kind of right away after they submit their paperwork. Um, but it just seems to kind of depend on on what call the bank decides to make. Okay. Um, I have another question. Will I have my work permit first before I apply to the corporate program? Yeah, so the corporate problem, we don't deal with immigration. So either you already, so typically you already figure out on your own um, how, uh, how do you want to travel to Canada if you need to travel to Canada? So, so again, the only requirement is that actually to enroll in the corporate program, you need to have a Canadian corporation. That's 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 a requirement. Um, it's not you don't have to have like a worker again. It will depend on the goals. Are you planning to travel often here to Canada or are you planning to hire someone here locally and you don't have to come? So that's things that we can discuss. Uh, the immigration component is not a requirement. Again, that's the difference for the startup visa path. Right. That's why I'm saying it's more customized. But yeah, the only thing is that you need to be again a tech company and already with a Canadian corporation. Yeah, so to to just kind of put that another way, there are sort of two profiles that we see applying for the corporate program. Mm -hmm. One is is um, co-founders who don't intend to move to Canada. They probably intend to hire someone locally to kind of run the Canadian branch on their behalf. Um, the other is someone who one or more co-founders are in Canada uh, are in Canada already or have another path to Canada through some other immigration program um, or maybe through sometimes a spouse you know is is in Canada and they were able to come that way is is another possibility um, and then they want to you know operate and uh, sort of get that acceleration support um, so those are kind of the two profiles if you want to get the um, you know the work permit and the permanent residence through your business, then that is startup visa path. Yes, yeah. And uh, those live sessions that will be host, one of the sessions you have, it's about legal, like incorporation immigration. So get more in-depth knowledge uh, about those topics. Um, so I know we are kind of running out of time, but I, I, I guess we can take the questions that we have right now. Uh, your co-founders already resident in Canada as a PR. Does this impact any way the process of incorporation? Um, no, not at all. Not at all. Uh, I mean, I, I would say that it's can help, right? Yeah, incorporation uh, even is, easier. Yes, yes. To yeah, open the incorporation bank is kind of you can you won't run into any problems incorporating even if you don't have a co-founder who has PR. The yes. co-founder being in Canada will help a lot with the bank account, though. Yes. That does make a difference. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. Um, again, it was great seeing that uh, we had a lot of questions. Uh, I love it. Um, I I guess I put the email 
uh, on the presentation, but I don't know, Samar, if you can put the contact email, feel free to, would love to continue conversations. We'll send the record session. We we'll send a link for those live sessions where we'll touch base in more depth about legal, corporation, immigration, um, market research, sales and marketing North America. You will see, you don't have to sign up for all the sessions. You can select the session that you have more interest in signing up. Um, and yeah, I mean, we'll happy, happy to, to continue chatting if, if you want. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Special thanks uh, for my team, but also to Dan and to Timothy to being here and joining and sharing your experience uh, with you guys. And yeah, I mean, wish you a rest of a lovely day. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Night.